G'day guys, welcome back to Supercoach with DR. Hope that you've all been well. It's certainly been a while, hasn't it? I've been off all the social media accounts as you wouldn't know for the last couple of months because some kind gentleman in South Korea decided to try and steal my identity, believe it or not. Had my email, my bank account hacked and just had to shut up shop for a while. But everything's all sorted now and just in time for the 2021 team pickup. Certainly an early Christmas present for me. But unfortunately, it's only available to the Herald Sun subscribers. So what I thought I'd do is give everyone a quick look at all of the 2021 starting prices, particularly for those that don't have the subscription, and maybe put together a quick team also. I've asked Santa for a new microphone, so hopefully in the next couple of weeks, the audio will improve in the videos. And I'm also popping out a couple of videos in the next day or two also, one about the dog's midfield and another one about players who have transferred clubs during the off-season as well. But we're all here for the team picker. I'm bloody excited as I haven't even had a proper look myself. So let's start from the back line. The man up the top, the Seagull, Jake Lloyd, 656000 He's the highest price defender going into 2021. It's no surprise, really. Look, he gets his free serving of large chips every week, the Seagull. For me, he's just one of those auto-select players. It absolutely killed me not having him last year. You would have known that if you followed me during last season. But uh, I won't be making the same mistake again. I'm just going to lock him in straight away at D1. The Seagull, lock him straight in. Ryan, 576000 uh, second highest price defender there. Laird, I think he's always going to be a good selection. Does he continue his role in the midfield, or does he go back to that half-back role? Yeah, I'm not too sure, but uh, I think either way, he's always a pretty solid selection and pretty consistent in regards to his scoring. Lockie Whitfield, here's the other bloke I'm just going to lock straight in. As we know, he was a mid forward last year, but at 561, now only available as a defender. I think I'm going to stay safe and just lock him in right from the start. Sicily, we obviously can't select him. He's out for, I think, most of the season, if not all the season. Maynard and Ridley both had really solid years last season. Uh, breakout years for those two players. Look, I'm not going to start with either of these blokes. Ridley, I like more than Maynard. But for me, because he only broke out last year, we've only seen one year of really high-quality performances from Ridley. And don't get me wrong, I think that this bloke will only get better. But he's one of those wait and sees. I think, for me. I'm going to try to play it a little bit safer, I think, with my D1 and D2 in Lloyd and Whitfield there. Daniel, he's always a consistent scorer. Mills at 544. And Tommy Stewart, he's another bloke that I really like as well at 538. But uh, for me, I'll probably look to get another bloke in at D3. I don't even know how much he's going to cost. I'm guessing around the 450 mark. And you'll see who that is in a minute. Crisp, he's always pretty, well, pretty average. You know, he's, he's just outside that top 10 for defenders, but one thing that he will give you is that he'll play every week. Blitzarv, don't know what his role is going to be. Haynes really broke out last year for a good season, as did Saad. Short is a bit of a pod pick. I don't think I'll be looking to start with him. How? How does he come back? Started like a house on fire, didn't he, last year, but crueled by injury. Went down in the early stages of the season, so how will he bounce back? Not too sure. Always an option, though. Doherty, he was pretty disappointing, wasn't he, last year after a pretty bright start and almost a 200-point game, I think it was, within there. Uh, just, sort of just scrolling through these plays here. There's a bloke that I was talking about, Zach Williams. Now, we saw what he did when he was playing through the midfield at the Giants. Average really nice numbers. At 458, I think he's a really good value pick there. Look, with Williams, we know that he's got injury history, but given the fact that his touted role is to play through the midfield there, uh, to go through with Paddy Cripps and Sam Walsh. At that price, I think he's almost too good to refuse, I think. But he's a bit of a, you know, wait and see. See how he's going during the preseason. Like like most of the picks anyway, but I really like him at his price there. Uh, Dude, also liked him last year. Had him before he went down with injury. I think he could be a really good intercept defender. But again, probably wait and see. And that injury history does worry me. William certainly does worry me. But I think with Whitfield and Lloyd... They're fairly safe. Whitfield, maybe not actually on reflection there. But again, I'm just putting a quick team together as I'm scrolling through some names. Duggan there. Does he play more midfield time? Burn Jones, good year last year. Hunter Clark, maybe one of those breakout contenders. Same as Lukosius, but he's lost his DPP status, unfortunately, there. Uh, some may look at a Nick Newman. Uh, what's ever going to happen with SPS? Had Noble last year. Served me pretty well. Will Day, will he continue to really break out? In his second season, who knows there. Michael Hibbard, old man's news, I think. 
again, you can pause the video almost uh, if you want, but again, I'm just sort of scrolling through these names. No one really standing out to me at this stage from listers I'm just scrolling through now. I know Henry's brother should be available. Um, got drafted by Collingwood as a rookie. Uh, Miller, he's actually an interesting one. Wayne Miller. He only played the two games last year. What was that for an average of 83? But highly rated. I think Adelaide really needs some speed through the midfield there. So he could be a real candidate for that. I know Crouch has obviously left. Um, so Miller could be someone to look at if you're looking at that sort of mid-price option. I'm probably looking at the guns and rookies approach at this stage this year. But look, we have to wait and see what happens. Um, a lot of things happen <laughs> in between, you know, your first version like I'm putting together now and... Obviously, the start of the 2021 season, but he's certainly a name um, just to take a look at anyway. Keep on your watch list, I think. Starsfield did well last year. I probably wouldn't select him this year. Gibbs, I think he's retired, isn't he? So don't look at him. Uh, we've got a March Bank. Butterick. Adams could be interesting. I uh, don't think so, though, with his injury history and his role, I don't think really suits Supercoach. Same as Payne. Jordan Clark would be an interesting one. I know there was talk about him going back to, or getting traded to one of the WA clubs, but I think he chose to stay in Geelong, fight for his spot. He's certainly got talent, this bloke. Uh, got some DPP status. Do you look at him as a mid-price or one of those high price rookies? I'm not sure. That's sort of up to you. But uh, certainly someone, I think, to keep on your watch list there. Uh, Hamill, I rate him from Adelaide as a super co coach sorry, option. Mm, yeah, not too sure. Um... Granger Barras, I think I'll put him in. No Sicily, I know he's the most highly rated defender from the draft this year. So he's probably one to put in. What does Clarko do? I'm really not too sure. They've got Hardigan there as well. Uh, obviously lost Frawley, who's now at St Kilda. Uh, Chapman, heard good things about him. Keane, does he get a spot? Not too sure about that. Maybe someone to keep on the watch list there. Uh, Gould, does he come in? Look, he's probably just one of those blokes that you just put in and hope. Just a bit of a placeholder, probably for now. Um, anyone else? Yeah, McLennan. No, maybe Murphy. Heard a bit about him. What's happening with Collingwood? Really not too sure. Uh, Jackson Pryor. Look, he certainly won't start, but uh, I think they do rate him down at the lines, and he's only one or two injuries away in the back line, I think, from uh, getting a game. Thompson, don't know what's happening with him, but uh, I know he was a decent player. Never going to score you huge points, but if he's fit, uh, should play every week, I think. I don't know about his what happened last year, about his injury history. Highmore, I know, is a mature age player from the Sandful, from memory. Sharp, don't look at him. He'll be completing year 12 next year. I don't even know if that will be in Brisbane. He's not too sure yet himself, so I wouldn't look at him. And then we get down to a Patrick Walker at 102-400, so... What are the blokes I've selected there is a bit of a short list. So I've got the Seagull, Whitfield, Zach Williams, Granger Barras, Gould as a placeholder, Murphy Pryor, and Rory Thompson there from the Suns. So, uh, yeah, interesting picks there. I didn't see a heap of value, to be quite honest. Williams is probably that value pick out of the lot there. Maybe I've just scrolled through a little bit too quickly, but uh, no real names are shouting out at me, apart from the blokes that I've sort of mentioned there. On to the midfield. This is where lots of the points are at. No surprise there. See Lockie Neal is the highest priced midfielder at 721,800. Look, I'm not going to go through these blokes, as I said, in great detail. I will do an individual video on each one of the lines during the preseason at some stage. So I will run through these guys pretty quick, but I'm going to select Lockie Neal in my side. Jack Steele was another one who really broke out last year. He's the second highest price midfielder going into 2021. I'm going to whack him in at this stage as well. Oliver third, McRae fourth, and Petrucca fifth. Look, I think it makes sense. If you think that Max Gorn's going to be the dominant Ruckman next year, I think it does make sense to look at either Oliver or Petrucca. Petrucca was magnificent for us in our forward lines. Look, he's only got mid-status, but I don't think that that should put us off too much. The thing that puts me off slightly with Petrucca is that we've only seen the one season, which was last year. I suppose you could say the same thing for Jack Steele in a way, but... That does concern me. He's maybe a wait and see for me. See if he does pump out those really high numbers again. And if so, maybe jump on him then. McRae, he's usually a lock for me each season. Well, for the last two to three seasons anyway. But 
yeah, there's a few reasons for me not selecting him to start off with this year. And I'll go through those in another video in the next week or so, as I said, talking about the dog's midfield in particular. Bonson Pally as well. Well, we know that he's had those huge games as well, massive ceiling. But does he play a little bit more forward time next year? Again, we'll discuss that in a later video. Zach Meritoy is an interesting one. Hunter I wouldn't really look to go with. Josh Kelly... Yeah, that injury risk really does worry me. He's probably someone that I'm going to avoid, even though I really rate him as a player. Danger's available in our forward line, so certainly not in the midfield. Titch you'd always look at. Five I'm probably going to stay away from. Again, just going through a few of these names, mainly because you can just see the prices there. Uh, Greenwood only available as a midfielder this year. Uh, Dunkley available as a forward, so I'll certainly be selecting him when we get to the forward line. Brayshaw didn't have a great year last year. Dusty, probably not going to start off with him this year. Cogs, he's a real tease each year, isn't he? Uh, Walter's got that DPP status. Sorco as well, available as a forward now. Paddy Cripps, see, I said to myself, I'm definitely not going to start with this bloke, but uh, I think he's got some value, doesn't he? 523,000. Yeah, didn't even average 98 last year. Look, I'm just going to whack him in for now. This is probably going to be a really bad selection. Certainly not going to end this way, I know, but yeah, value, value. You've got to have a little bit of value there uh, with proven numbers in the past. Yeah, I'm not wrapped with that selection. I said I wasn't going to do it. Probably won't, but I'm just going to whack him in for now. Barry, another breakout contender. Tim Kelly, yeah, had an off year last year. Someone I'm not really going to look at to start with, I don't think. Simpkin, only available in the midfield now. Matty Rao, he's an interesting one. Look, I'm just going to whack him in for now. Look, do you or don't you? I'll, I'll probably wait and see on Matty Rao, but I uh, really rate him as a player. He could be a premium selection by the end of the year, I think, at some stage. Uh, probably won't start with him, um, but I'll just whack him in, as I said there. Chera, only available as a midfielder. I thought he might have some DPP status, but unfortunately not the case. Uh, another bloke I like as a value pick is Timmy Taranto. So, terrible year last year, 11 matches, just no continuity in his game. 453,000, though. If you look at his numbers previous to last year, then I think he's one of those blokes that could really, really break out into that elite bracket. So value-wise, yeah, I'm looking at him. Will I start with him again? I'm not too sure. I'm really just adding blokes as I see a little bit of value here in the midfield. But I'm probably going to look to play it a little bit more safe, I think, in mid at this stage. Prestia could be a bit of value there at 446. Selwood, I think he's too old now, isn't he? Uh, Brody Smith with some new DPP there. Uh, Angus Brayshaw, what's ever going to happen with him? Not too sure. Zach Bailey, really rate him as a player, but as a super coach option, I'm just not sure what role he's going to get going into next year. Tommy Phillips, he could be an interesting one. Value-wise at 402, probably get his wing role. He didn't really get that role last year at Collingwood, so maybe a little bit of value there, but do you want to end with him in your team? Probably not. I don't think so. I'd probably look to stay away there, but maybe a little bit of value uh, just rushing through these guys now. Uh, Hanabry maybe for some, not for me. Uh, Sia fill in. He's meant to be getting a little bit more time in the Collingwood midfield. Uh, could be a mid-price option there, but one that I'd probably look to stay away from at this stage. Uh, no other names are screaming out at me. Stack, yeah, he's a bit of a peanut, isn't he? Uh, Clark, already mentioned him, I think, in the back line. Will Phillips. Well, he was an early draft pick, a bit of a bolter. He's always, I think, rated in the top six sort of players, but a uh, little bit of a surprise that North took him so early at three. So, uh, yeah, Will Phillips, maybe one that I'll look, look, I'll just whack him in for now. Certainly think he'll be getting game time. You think that ready to play sort of a player, I think, Will Phillips. Uh, Nash, what happens with him? Not too sure. Dev Robinson, yeah, again, I don't think he starts. I think he's. An injury or two away from getting into the side. Archie Perkins, I've heard good things about. Bit of X factor. Just wake him in for now. He's got that DPP status. Uh, but again, don't know a heap about him. Have to do a little bit more research. Uh, I might get one McCray in just for now. Again, all the rookies are placeholders here. I uh, haven't done any research really whatsoever. Just a few names that I'm recognising here. Cockatoo, I like him. Uh, Looking to get him in at the start of last season. But look, that injury history is always going to be a concern. But we'll see if he hits the ground running at Brisbane. If so, then he's cheap. Uh, we know what he can do. Uh, and that isn't anything spectacular when it comes to Supercoach. But the value there with his DPP, 
if he plays well, even for the first part of the season, Nick could present some really good value. So I'm just going to put him in there for now. Collier Dawkins, well, does he get a game again? I'm not too sure. A Richmond, but we'll just whack him in there for now. Uh, any other names here? Tom Joyce, I know that they rate him at Brisbane, but again, competition for spots is going to be really tough. Same Eli Smith. He's been a little bit disappointing, to be quite honest. Uh, Jack Carroll, I think he was a bit of a slider. Let's just whack him in there for now. Uh, just take you through the rest of the rookies here. Poulter, heard a little bit about. Sharp from Brisbane, don't select him. He's, he'll be doing year 12 next year. Don't even know if that will be in Brisbane. And all the way down to Zane True. From West Coast at 102,400. If you're looking for most likely, I'd say a non playing player. On to the rucks. So I'll always keep this pretty simple. Jeepers, look at that. Jeez, 751,000. Well, I said that I was going to start with him, Maxi Gorn. And I'm definitely starting with Brody Grundy. He didn't like Hub Life. So I think he'll bounce back this year. Bit of pressure on him with his big contract and. All the salary cap issues that they've had down there at the Pies. But, uh, yeah, look, I'm bound, backing him to bounce back, uh, being the top two again. Geez, Max Gorn. Yeah, as I said, I said that I was going to get him in. But, gee, that's a lot of money, isn't it? Um, I think it's dangerous not to have him because he's that captaincy option each week. Probably looking to swing him uh, into Neil or vice versa. Um, but, yeah, we'll have a look at the other options that we've got here. But, uh yeah, I'm not really keen on anyone else. Marshall as a forward, I'm keen on. Uh, keep going down. McAvoy, as we said, he's available as a defender. The big O could be an option if you're looking to go a little bit cheaper. Uh, Segler, he was a train wreck if you had him in last year. Proust, he could be an interesting one. What's he? 303,000. He'll probably be the number one ruck at GWS. Is he good enough to produce enough points? And at number one role, I'm really not too sure, but he's probably that value pick. Well, probably the three here. Steph Martin, does he play each week? I'm not too sure. Will they look to put maybe English into that forward role? I'm really not too sure. Um, he's, yeah, it's a, it's a real risk, I think, getting Steph Martin. And Hickey, do they rate him above Sinclair? If he plays each week, he could be that other option. If you want to go really cheap and save some money in the ruck, take a bit of risk there and spend that money elsewhere but yeah for me at this stage I think I'm just going to lock the two big boys in. Uh, Phil Thorpe I know he was a really early draft pick for Adelaide. He'll probably get early games but again yeah he's a risk to have at your R2. He's a risk to have I think. Well not a risk to have but you're paying probably too much to have him at your R3 I'd say. I'm just going to go all the way down. I think uh, look who's cheap. Again, you can just pause the video if you want to look at particular prices there. Josh Treacy, by the look of a forward ruck. I'm looking to get Marshall into my forward line, so he'll be good. 102k. Not sure what's going on in the fixture again this year. Uh, I'll think about this a lot more in greater detail, but at that stage, at this stage, sorry, I'm just going to go with him. Danger, I'll just lock him in for now. I'm looking at Dunkley, looking at Marshall. So they're probably the top three. Then I'm going to go with here. Side bottom, he's available now as a forward mid. 588. Probably getting a little bit too old for me, uh, paying top dollar. Maybe see what happens. Tomahawk, again, I say this each year about key forwards, but he had a stellar season last year. Uh, did big Tommy. Had some really big games as well. But again, I'm just going to avoid him. See what happens. Uh, probably, yeah, bite me in the bum again. But if you're looking at probably the top six there, Dusty. Jeez, he's burnt just a little bit, hasn't he? I'm just, yeah, I'm not going to start with him. Again, I say that every year. I'm not going to start with him. I end up getting Dusty in. So, again, we'll see what happens. But from the players there that we've got available, the top three, I'd probably go with Dangerfield, Dunkley. Both got that DPP status. Can swing mid, can swing forward. And Marshall, uh, I think he could be handy as well, having that DPP status available as a forward. But uh, I'd be selecting him as a forward over the ruck, um, and again, I think if you do get Marshall into your side, it's important as that R3 loop to get someone like a Tracy in, or some yeah cheap option with some DPP status. Uh, Walters available there. He's always around the mark, isn't he, Walters? But uh, things just happen with Sonny. Uh, Zorko, I probably wouldn't recommend 
to go with him because I think he'll get more of that forward role. Uh, look, he will certainly play through the midfield. That's a given. But uh, I think blokes like Barry will play a little bit more time through there. But uh, Zorko is more of that X-factor player. But I think as he's getting older, he'll be spending a lot more time in that forward line. Um, but again, we'll just track and see how he's going. Could present a little bit of value there. Uh, but for me, I probably won't look to start with Zorks as much as I love him being a Lions man, obviously. Dixon there is a key forward. Robbie Gray... Again, I thought I, was, you know, he he was over the hill, but had a pretty good end to the season, to be honest. Last year, Malt Bolton, does he play in the midfield? If so, yeah, he could have a real breakout season, but probably wouldn't look to go with him. Heaney, he's a tease, isn't he? Each each year, but uh, if he's fit and firing, he's able to play through the midfield. And again, I'm repeating myself. I think for the last three years, probably with Isaac Heaney, but he's always one we can have a look at. Martin is really disappointing. Toby Green. Always an option if you're looking to go with a bit of a risk. Degoe, don't really love him. Zach Bailey mentioned him. Butler, had a real good year last year, but I don't think he's a super coach option. Uh, scrolling through, Rayner. Uh, no. Jeremy Cameron, does he present value? I'm not going with him myself. Uh, again, key forward. Uh, Toby McLean, no. He's got no chance of playing in the midfield with the addition of Trelaw, I don't think. None of the names, again, are really screaming out at me here. Zerha, is he a breakout contender? Maybe. Uh, no, no, no. Tommy McDonald. Good in the past, but I, yeah, just don't know with him. Buddy, what's he? 312,000. If you're looking to take a risk, but I don't think. Is he injured again? I'm not too sure with Buddy. Uh, Kadean Coleman, Kitty. He's probably going to be in the borderline of that best 22, I think. Uh, Peter Wright down at the Dons. No, I don't think so, though. Uh, Hannon, he's changed clubs, but cheap option. I don't think he presents enough value there. Again, no other names that are really screaming out at me here, to be quite honest. Gee, Ben Brown, 260. Does he present some value? Look, I'm just going to pop him in for now. It's a bit of a weird option. I need to think more about this, but... He could possibly present a little bit of value there. He'll have his really bad weeks again, but he could have some really good weeks, which could push up his value, which is what we need. Joey Danaher, 233. Is that maybe a toss-up between maybe a Joey and a Ben Brown? Um, maybe one of those two, if you're looking for that high-priced rookie. I'm not too sure. Yugo Hagen. Yeah, maybe it's a choice between one of those two, or one of those three, or a Thilthorpe even. Again, I'm not really not too sure at this stage. I'm, I'm more just trying to show you the prices here and put a rough team together. Elijah Hollands, I know he's highly rated, but does he get slowly integrated into the seconds um, and look to fight for a spot? I'm not too sure. Cox, I might put in there. I'll probably run out of money here. Don't even know what the salary cap's at at this stage. But again, these guys, these rookies are more placeholders, I think, at this stage. Uh, Jared Cameron, Charlie's brother. Not too sure. Will Kelly. Oliver Henry, well, I just know his name, so I'll chuck him in there. Uh, again, I will run out of money here, so I won't be able to complete a, a side here. Bergman, I think he was an early-ish first-round draft pick. I think maybe an early second. Uh, Cockatoo, I've already got in there. Uh, Joyce, McConnor, Eli Smith, I don't think he'll break his way into the side. Josh Worrell is an interesting one, possibly. Max Holmes, I know Geelong did trade up to get him in, but they've got a heap of mature age players that they've brought into the side, like your Higgins, your Smith, your Cameron, these types. So I think it'll be tough for the younger types to get a game. Uh, Shannon Neal, here's a forward ruck. Another one of those DPP swings. Polter I've heard a little bit about. Just get him in for now. He's got that DPP swing. I've run out of money here, so not a complete side. Uh, and then we get down to Tracy again, who's that forward ruck. So... Yeah, they are the options that you've got this year, guys, and the prices. As I said, I uh, haven't gone into anyone in great detail, but that's the basic side. So I'm, I'm down to 9,700 and one spot down there in the forwards. But that is the basic side that I've come up with at this stage. Rookies are placeholders. And again, some of these premium picks, like your Steel Crips, Real Taranto, really that whole midfield is pretty speculative. Uh, the back line... Yeah, pretty set, at least on Lloyd and Whitfield at this stage. Williams, as I said, I really like as a value pick. And in the forward line, 
Dunkley, I really like. He's basically a lock for me, along with Marshall. Dangerfield, yeah. Because he's available as a forward, I think he's really tempting. Gorn and Grundy, if you don't go with Gorn, I think that's going to be a pod move. Or will that really high starting price put people off? I'm really not too sure. But I've always said from the end of last year, I'm just going to go set and forget in the rucks. I think with, with Gorn, he's always a good captaincy option, as we know. I'm not really telling you anything new there. But uh, look, I might leave the video there, guys, because I think it's it's uh, gone long enough. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think about what options you're looking at for next year. Um, I will come up with a heap more content in the next couple of weeks, as I said. But uh, good to see you guys. Take care, and I'll see you soon in the next one with the next video. Don't know what it will be, but, uh, yeah, I need to take in all these prices and positional changes and um, see what will come up for version 2, which will be probably in the next day, I dare say. So take care, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.